Hey there guys, and welcome to my new lesson series, Learn from the Masters. This time we will look at Johann Sebastian Bach, and um, exactly we're looking at the cello suite number one in D minor. There's so much stuff you can get out of, and I want to show you some creative approaches, how you can practice it, how you can harmonize it, or maybe create some, some interesting stuff to learn from it. Not just the music, but learn from the, uh, the, the written, written music. So let's give it a listen. Alright, so as you heard, this melody is just played on its own, so there are no chords in the background. And the first thing we could, could do is to find some, some chords that fit with the melodies. Nice. And so, as the title says from, from the music, it's in D minor, so we can, we can guess it's in D minor. So let's start the first bit. This is the first bar. So, as you now see, this here, it's our good trusty D minor triad, so everyone who uh, disagrees and says, oh, why should I learn my triads? Now you know why you have to learn your triads, because everyone uses them, and they are so important. I, I tell that to my students all the time. Um, so the first thing is the D minor triad. The next thing is, it's very nice, we start from the, the minor third, then the second, and then the one. So the chord we could play would be D minor. This would be the first bar, basically. So, if you join my Patreon group, you can, uh, you will become the, the tablature and notation, and you can really see the functions, the harmony. Also, I, I, um, I wrote the intervals, so you can, so you can really dig in deep with the stuff. So here's the second bar. It's a very nice sound, and basically. This outlines a E diminished triad over D. So the melody with the chords would be like this. Sounds very nice when you use the arpeggio, so you can have a nice voice leading. Um, the next thing is, I guess, I guess that's the D minor scale just backwards. So far we have. Then we're in bar number three, and bar number three starts with... This is again the same arpeggio idea, so this is a e, dim e diminished triad, and this time over A. And then again back the scale. So you can use the A in the bass and play... And now here... We can use the diminished arpeggio because, as you know, you can use the diminished arpeggio always a minor third away, just up or down. This is a very nice concept when, when playing um, and playing diminished stuff because. And the next chord you need is is the D minor because th that is the one. So the, the the idea really starts on the one chord because it's the D minor. Ba then we have the diminished ba da 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 and then back to D minor da 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 da. So this would be the idea. Sorry for my bad singing. It's just to show you the basic idea and the concept behind this. So the chord progression in itself would be basically it's the one chord, then going to the two two chord, which is a diminished in a minor scale, then again the two chord. And then the one. So basically, we're just outlining two chords. Um, that's a very nice concept um, to keep it interesting and to move a little bit away, but still be in the same in the same tonality. This is very great. You can also see it as um, as the five going to the one because we can also use this. Let's let's start from the beginning. Now you could play a major. Uh, sorry. Back to diminished. Again, a my a, a major a seventh. Mm. 
So you can play. So, so you can use also the dominant chord. It sounds also very nice. But I think the intention was to diminish the arpeggio. And that's another great concept you can learn from Bach. If you, if you want, or not, not only, only from Bach, but um, you can use a diminished uh, arpeggio over a seven chord. Sounds very nice, as you noticed, right? You can play an A7 and then can play. It sounds very nice, it's a very, very open sound. So another idea you can get out of it. The other thing is, um, what about if you analyze the, the, the intervals against it, what about doing a major version of it? So it's not this. So you know, it's a, it is D minor original. Now use the D major. So let's listen, let's give it a listen how it sounds when it's completely in major, right now here. So this was the creative approach number one. You can use the original melody and create its opposite tonality. So in this case, we were in D minor and we created it in D major. So this is a great concept. Also, to not to steal from a composer, but to borrow the idea. This is, this is a great, great thing you can do. Um, so another thing you can do is you can, um, you can borrow the first rhythm. So it's da 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 da. So Although it's in 3-4, in let's have a groove in 4-4, four, four, some very, very different, um, different uh, genre, but let's try to use the same idea. One, two, three, four. Then you can go on with the, with your other approaches. All right. Another thing you can do is you can harmonize your idea. So um, let's give it a listen. It's it's not really um, now on beat. It's just in free time rubato played, but just to give you an idea of the harmonies. So listen. Very nice, I guess, some baroque kind of sound. Um, so, and this is also just harmonizing a melody, and this can give you also some very nice idea because, as you imagine, the first part of the melody was, and now it's harmonized. It's a very nice sound if you want to want to double something or if you um, if you want to um, create some interesting harmonies and just use a, um, a, a tiny bit of it. For example, you can use and then you go and you go back to the normal melody so, so you can create some, some very nice fears. So um, yeah, so these are the approaches. Um, thanks for tuning in to my new series Learn from the Masters. Um, I hope you liked it. So let me know if you have any questions. As a Patreon of mine, um, you will get all the transcription from this. You will get the, the normal version, you'll get the functional harmony, you will get the chords, you will get the, the major version of it, the creative approach um, with the harmonized version, you get it uh, notated with tap and standard notation. And um, yeah, so um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. So use please the subscribe button and the tiny bell. Click on it so you will get every notification if I upload a video. So this will support my channel and help me growing and help me keeping cool content for you guys. So um, I hope you like it. Um, see you next time with the next lesson. Have fun. And if you have any questions, just drop me a line. Bye-bye.